So everybody, this is Jay from Naj and Jay. Unfortunately, Naj can't make it today because we're having some surprise, some COVID issues, and we wanted to keep everyone safe. Um, but we are here with Edward Loper Jr. Edward. Edward Loper Jr. <laughs> yes. Um, a, a phenomenal artist who is from Wilmington. Um, he's one of our gems, and this is his son next to him, Jamie Loper. And it is my pleasure to just have you in my presence. Mm -hmm. We can see his art here behind. Um, and I, my first question is just a big general one. How does it feel to have this Percy Ricks exhibition going on now? Um, everyone knows the story about what was supposed to have happened in the 60s. And, now we finally have something that's giving you guys the credit you deserve. How does that feel? Well, to me, it, it should have happened a long time ago, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, in Wilmington, the only way you we're going to learn art. You couldn't learn it at high school. There, there was no way of learning how to paint or do anything. Mm -hmm. Wilmington was, was, I had to go to Philadelphia to learn about art. Mm -hmm. But I started out because my father was a painter, all right. And when I was just a little boy, Dad would say, sit still. And I sat still. So he would make sketches of me and everything else in the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, was, he was famous back then when I was just a little kid. And uh, everything was art. Uh, I didn't get to look at comic books. I looked at art. Mm -hmm. uh, the books that we had that came to the house every month was art news. Okay. And it was, it didn't have this museum in it because this was a little place back then. Oh. All right. But dad was taking paintings to Philadelphia and uh, the Carlin Gallery was showing his paintings every week, every time. He would take me to Philadelphia with him as a little boy. Right. And Carlin Gallery was one big long hall. And Dad and Carl would hang the paintings up. And I just watched him hang them up. And then we'd go get something to eat and come on back to Wilmington. Uh -huh. But Dad, sold paintings that way. Uh -huh. Dad had a sh show here and he got first prize and that was, that was a, they never did anything like that before. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, the people at the show refused to shake his hand. Wow. All right. It was that bad. Yeah. All right. Well, In Philadelphia, we didn't get that, all right? Because first place, Carlin, in Philadelphia, you, you could learn things. You, there, you could go to a bookstore and see books with color in it. Yeah. Uh, in Delaware, they didn't have books, art books, none. No high school. Mm -hmm. Howard was the only high school yeah. that was going to teach art anyway. And, and I went there, and uh, when, when I got to Howard High School, when I was in the seventh grade, Dad had already been in a lot of shows here, yeah. all right, jewelry shows, and he was winning prizes and all that, and he had stuff in Philadelphia and Washington, museums all over the place. And uh, when, uh, I got to Howard School, 
the um, they had an art program, and it's only for maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So I go to this teacher signed in, and this teacher, I don't think he knew anything about anything except being a, a mason, all right? Okay. <laughs> all right. And uh, I watched him take three metal pans and put them on the table. Okay. And uh, it was, I'm in a class with girls. Okay. Right? All, all these years before that, from first grade to the seventh grade, you, I was in class with boys, no girls. Okay. Back then. All right. Well, well there was girls in this class, and I'm just sitting there watching these girls, and I see him pour water in this pan, and then he took a tube of paint and squeezed it one color, and then another color, and a third color. And he had a stick, and he started swirling it so that the color would move on the water. Sure. All right. And he was going to take pieces of paper and lay it on that to pick up one color. And then, now that's called marbleizing paper. Marbleizing paper. All right. Okay. Now, my father's mother. Marion, she had showed me that in Washington when we went down there before the war. Okay. Uh, she had showed me how to do that. You know, I don't know why she was doing it. <laughs> but I said, oh, that's marvelizing, like that. Yeah. And he looked at me. He said, what, what is this? Uh, who, who told you about this? I said, my grandmother. Wow. All right. And he said, who's your grandmother? I said, Marion Scott. I said, well, where'd she learn it from? And uh, the word, I said, well, her son is Edward Loper. And he said, Edward Loper? And I said, yeah, that's my father. He says, why? Edward Loper doesn't know anything about this. He doesn't know anything about painting. He paints with black lines. Well, I don't remember what I called him. <laughs> but the, the students stood up and looked at me like, you're gonna get put out of school. And I got up, and he was reaching for me, but you know, I walked out of class. And uh, when it came time for marking period, I got a E. <laughs> I, I haven't even heard the term E for years, but yeah. an E, yes. And, it was, and Dad said, <laughs> What is this about? And I told him. He said, oh, don't worry about that. He said, the guy don't know what he's talking about. All right. But I, 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 did, I said, I'm not going back to art. He said, well, you got to do something. And they, they, he died. This, uh -huh. this guy died. And I went back to class, and they gave me a guy, I think he was just getting out of the army. And uh, I don't think that he knew too much about art. But he let me do anything I wanted. Right. You know, I got A's. That's the only thing I got A's in. Really? <laughs> in, 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 in art. Because your I son says that you do B's so many things. B's right? and C's and all that other stuff. But. Uh, I, I, I made up my mind. I said, 
if the teacher doesn't know anything, I said, I, I could teach kids all my, I could do that. Got gotcha. you. Right? Yeah. And uh, I, I didn't know that I, I could really do it until a friend of mine asked me to uh, teach at Christina Center. Was that Christina Cultural Arts before yeah. it became? Okay. Down, down Church Street. Yes, I, I took guitar there for a little bit. And uh, Rodney Collins told me, come on down. Cause me and Rodney, we were hunting buddies. Uh -huh. So I go down there and uh, this guy Dangerfield, who ran the place, uh, he showed me the art room and all that. So. I started teaching down there, and I just didn't teach painting. I, I taught everything I know about art. Yeah. All right, where pottery came from, uh, Africa, right. European, <coughs> pre-Columbian. Pre mm -hmm. And I knew about that because I read the books. Did your and dad instill that in you? N no. <laughs> no, dad said he was completely different. Okay, how? Please. How? All right. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm eight years old. Dad, for Christmas I got a paint box. And I could look out the front door up at Cage Street and Forest Street. And I could draw like a whiz when I was just a little kid. And I went to the door and I made a drawing with a perspective and everything looking up the street. And uh, Dad looked at it and said, when are you going to start painting it? So I started painting it, you know, because I had seven different colors. And you mix if you want to make a different color, all right? But Dad looked at what was Aunt Nancy's house and said, you have red for the bricks. Go over there and look at those bricks and tell me what color you see. Uh -huh. So I walked out of the house, went across the street, looked at the bricks. It was orange and green and the bricks, all kinds of colors. So I came back, he says, what'd you see? I said, I saw a red. So he hit me. Uh-huh. So I said, I'm not painting anymore. Okay. All right. And I, I didn't. Okay. I, I didn't paint anymore until I, I started carving things all the time. And uh, while in the seventh grade, I did a carving of a weasel. Okay. It was this big. Okay. And I got the wood from out of the wood shop, and the teacher, George Whitten, said, What are you going to do with it? I said, I'm going to make a, a weasel. So I drew the weasel on the wood. <coughs> took most of the wood off with the bandsaw. He let me do that. I'm a seventh grader. And I carved this weasel. Uh -huh. And I brought it home. And one day, it, it, I didn't see it. I didn't know where it went. Dad entered it in the show oh, wow. here. Wow, wow. All right. And uh, the next time I heard about it, it's got an award. My, I'm a seventh grader. Right. All right. Well, the word got out that you had to be 20 years old. All right. The point but was made. I, I, I got <laughs> in. All right. But years later, by the time I was 20, I must have made 10 paintings. And, and, there was a thing called the, oh, it was in front of City Hall. 
and uh, I took some paintings I had up in front of the city hall, and people had their paintings lined up in front of the building. And uh, a friend of mine, Al Alfred Connell, saw me standing there. And he said, darn, Eddie. He said, are these all yours? I said, yeah. So uh, the, back then there was a guy by the name of Bill Frank who was a writer for the News Journal. And he was on, had a nighttime show, you know, like uh, Joe Pine. And uh, it, was, it, was, it wasn't on television. It was just a talk show. And uh, Bill Frank was walking in front of the city hall, looking at all the paintings. And uh, Rodney Square was over here. And Al says, that's Bill Frank. He says, I'm going to go across the street and holler at you, <laughs> and you hollered back, okay? I didn't know what Al was up to, so Al goes over and says, hey, Eddie Loper, you got anything in that show? Right. And I said, yeah, like that. Well, Bill Frank left what he was looking at, and he walked down, and he's standing there looking like this, and he, looked at me and he said, you in the loper, huh? I said, yeah. Well, he didn't say anything. All right. He wrote a strip in a newspaper this long that night. All right. Yeah. It was in the morning news and the, the uh, evening, evening paper. And then, <sighs> I thought I was on top of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I go back like a, a little bit? I'm trying to figure out, because you said a lot just in terms of that experience with your dad saying, go look at the red and how you saw it. And how did you then, and so you said, I'm not painting for now, I'm gonna, but you had to do something creative. So yeah. you sculpted. Yeah. What made you go from sculpting back to painting? Like what made you say, you know what, I, I still need to paint. People in Wilmington would tell you things like, you'll never be the man your father is. All right. And he was in the newspaper every day, you know. Mm -hmm. So he was a big, well known oh, guy. Yeah, well known. Yeah. But uh, I said, I got to do something. But I got serious when back then about staying alive. Hmm. Back then. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but. Because back then, every, seemed like every month, I was helping to carry coffins, mm -hmm. friends that were dying, mm -hmm. little kids. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just like now. Mm -hmm. All right. But it was either polio. And uh, in front of the theater, there was guys in wheelchairs who couldn't walk. Wow. Uh, one little boy I used to help go to school, he had braces on his legs. Yeah. And, uh, well, he didn't last. And uh, I was wondering if I was going to make 20 years old when I was just a little boy. Uh, yeah. And, uh, People were dying off. Uh, I think by the time I was 10, mom died. And almost a year later, my grandma would die. And the next thing, I, the next year, I'd bite my fingernails. Gotcha. But when the war ended. World War II? Yeah. Yeah. But when World War II ended. One street in front of me, three girls died in that street. And then a cousin, she died. And uh, I, was, I, I just knew I wasn't going to make 18 years old. 16 years old, I'd never be able to drive a car. 
So yeah. you painted in order to create a, 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 a legacy for yourself or to just kind of ease the stress of that? Just seeing people do things. Uh, my, my father's father drove, could drive a truck. Okay. Right? And I watched him change, pull the steering wheel and change the gear in the floor when I was a little boy. Sure. All right. And I said, I'd never be able to do that. And people who tell you you were not gotcha. going to be able to do that. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, you, you didn't have a chance. Uh -huh. We didn't live in a fancy neighborhood. Uh -huh. you know. uh, I didn't realize it back then, but our house had windows that were normal size. And I showed Jamie one day an uh, area where the houses on Bennett Street were only this wide, yes. the windows. Yes. All right. And the doors were only this wide. How do you get a piano in a house that size or refrigerator? These are things I don't right. think about, that you would never yeah. think about. Yeah. But uh, that, that whole thing, uh, uh, after that, I, I think the, the best thing I did was I left Howard School and went to Carver School. Okay. And all the same thing. You know, Howard and Carver was one big thing. But they teach you how to do electronics, uh, shoe repair. They think the black guys only want to know how to repair shoes mm -hmm. or dig ditches. All right. And they, they almost told you what you were going to do when you graduated back then. So you really made a decision to say, I don't know how much time I have, but you're not, if I'm speaking for you, if I'm saying the yeah. wrong thing, tell me, but I only have so much time, yeah. and you're not going to tell me what I'm going to do, right. so I'm going to paint, yeah. because I want to. Yeah, whatever, yeah. In fact, in the, in the yearbook, some person who wrote the stuff in there, we, we created our own yearbook, all right. I, I helped create the one for 1953 when I was 11th grader. Wow, okay. All right. So then on, in 54, when I graduated, I worked on that one. And in the yearbook then, it said that I was going to be, build houses and I was going to be a painter and I was going to do this. And they were right on the butt. Wow. Because. So you learned all of those skills still at the same time when you were in high school between yeah. the building and the painting. Yeah. Learned, yeah. By going okay. to Carver. Yes. But learning all those skills, like uh, e electronics and all that. Yeah. You'd have a chance at getting a job doing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> Guys were coming out of the military back then who were doing that, black guys. Yeah. All right. It, we we had a pool room, and Dad had this pool room, and it was like a clubhouse for these guys, and they they, they couldn't get jobs, you know. But uh, in that pool room, I was, you know, racking balls and all that kind of stuff, and cutting for the cards and things. But doing all that. I, w I watch these guys. I watch the expressions on their faces and I watch everything about them. Mm -hmm. And I can remember people's faces. All right? Yeah. Or you, you mention a person and I can remember their face. I don't know, might not remember their name, but I can remember their face. Uh -huh. All right. Anyway. You're absorbing all of this. Yeah. Yeah. And it it can it comes in handy. Of course. When you you I'm working on some stuff now. Uh, I did did three paintings. Uh, they're just little things like that. And uh, one of them 
is three old codgers sitting in a park. Okay. Old guys. And they're looking like this. And the reason why I did it is because there was a thing on television. I said, looking at a television station. And there were some old guys in a restaurant. And a girl was bent over over there. And they were, uh, <laughs> they what, were all looking like this. What I notice about you just in this small conversation is that your memory and detail, the details of your memories yeah. are unbelievable. Yeah. Like, I'm 45. Yeah. And I can have, I have general memories of uh -huh. high school and art, but the specifics that you're giving me uh -huh. are kind of mind blowing in that regard. And I can't, <laughs> but that has to be part of your gift is your ability to just lock things in and yeah. then repeat it, not repeat it, but put, put yeah. out your yeah. perspective of that. Yeah. That's so interesting. Can you talk to us about this specific painting and how that came about? Oh, that? Yes. Well, I, That was because of, uh, I, I had been working down at the port in uh -huh. Wilmington. Yep. And that's the smart thing, to get a pension. Yep. All right. And, and still, still. <laughs> yeah. <even now. laughs> to, to get this pension. And uh, when I wasn't working, I could paint. Okay. And I was doing a lot of that and uh, building electric signs and stuff like that. Yes, yes. So what I did, one, one day I walked from, I, I, I opened a, a, a frame shop on 11th Street and my daughter Muriel was gonna work it and I just walked up the street and I, saw one of the guys who he had been in the military for a year and they called him soldier okay all right and he was just standing there on 11th street outside that's a pool room yes that was walnut you don't even have to look at the painting and he was just, just leaning about. against that wall because the sun was hitting and uh i'm listening and, and, and what time is it what, what time of day is it? About right. 10 o'clock. Right. You know, and you can tell it's 10 o'clock by where the shadow is. I, I, I'm following. You keep talking to me. I'm watching and I'm learning. Right. Where, where that shadow is. Yes. And uh, I went back to the shop, got a canvas, and came back. And I... Uh -huh. And I did this in less than an hour. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, what was the general inspiration for it? Just what you, I mean, what, what said I got to get that scene? But I just did it. It, it. If I see something, I do it. Right. And, and I put it away. Yeah. All right. I don't know where the painting went. Right. After that. Right. Somebody bought it, you know. Yeah. That's it. I got money. Yeah. Anyway, the, uh, yeah, I, I, I just did that painting, and uh, when, when I came in here, it's all, I'll be darned. I, I, I did that, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, it's the same. If I do it once, I'll go back and do it another time. Uh, when Jamie was a little, little kid, mm -hmm. We used to go on vacation a lot because if you sell a painting, <laughs> you can go on vacation. I love it. I love it. Right. That's fantastic. I never would have thought about it, but it makes that's so cool. And and uh, when we were in, where we were in Maine. Yeah, yeah. We Maine, were in Maine. Maine Vineyard, yeah, some of those and things. there was a, a a a thing they call a well, they pull the boat. Up out of the oh, water. Oh, a dry dock. A dry dock. Okay. Yeah. They pull the it up out of the water. Okay. And you see a lot of those up in Maine because the 
when the tide goes out, the tide drops a ways. Right. Uh, lowered in this thing. Mm -hmm. Alright. The far further north, the further down it goes. Then. Okay. okay. So you remember Moses? Sure. Okay. <laughs> remember Moses said and the tide went out. Uh huh. And everybody came across. Yes. And then he crossed. And when the people came after him, the flood came and got him. Yes. All right. It's true. If you go to Nova Scotia, all right, you can stand there and watch the tide go just like that. Uh huh. All right. Uh-huh. I'm when following. When I come back in, there's these things that they have that'll give off the sound. Like to a let whistle. you know to get out. Mm -hmm. To get the hell out of there. Right. <laughs> right. So if it happened there. It could happen there. Yeah. It happened in Nova Scotia. Yeah. yeah. And Panama, how, how far yeah, down the tide drop? Yeah, right. Thing, yeah. One yeah. inch. Yeah. Huh. And he has, he has paintings that document that. Mm -hmm. You see the dock yeah. and then the boats, you mm -hmm. know, 20 or 30 feet below the pier, so. So that's the true story about Moses, though. <laughs> I, I followed all of that. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I, I totally, I'm, I'm catching what you're throwing at me, 100%. Uh, um, but, go ahead, I'm sorry. But, in, but in, in, in the, at this dry dock, I, I saw this back end of this boat sticking up out of the water. Well, it was, it's in a rack like that. Mm -hmm. All right, and they pulled up the hill, and they cleaned the hole, and repainted, and then they sent it right back out. Okay. Now that's all of Maine and Nova Scotia. Well, Jamie was sitting there. He uh, he, he must have been that mm -hmm. tall. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember this? Oh uh, yeah, we okay. have photos of this stuff. That's okay. Like really, that tall. Yeah. He was sitting there Less watching. Than five, yeah. All right, and somebody took a photograph of it. Okay. All right, but that painting didn't last a month when I got it back here. Mm. It was in a show at Blue Cross Body. Mm. And it's okay. hanging in the Blue Cross building. Yeah, it's Three. the CEO's you collection know. on the top floor. Okay. We've been in but a few the, times to look at it. It's beautiful. Yeah. So that's another example of you being like, yeah. I gotta catch this right now. But, but what's neat, even if we go on vacation, I did one where they filmed Jaws. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, I had this canvas like, like this big. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had my fishing pole and threw the line out. What did we catch? Uh, I think Bonita. A, a Bonita. Bonita, yeah. yeah. Never heard of that. Uh, it's big. Okay. All right. But I did did this painting, all right, and uh, I brought it on back, and uh, back then there was a lady by the name of Marilyn Bauman, okay. who had something to do with the Barnes Foundation. Okay. Well, Marilyn wanted to borrow the paint. So I let her borrow it. But they used that painting in one of their journals okay. to uh, for teaching at the Barnes Foundation. But uh, uh, when when he was going to daycare, I did one in Philadelphia of the Italian market. Okay. And they the uh, Barnes Foundation. When I, I was going there just to listen to Violet Demasia, mm -hmm. and uh, he told me bring it in, and I brought it in. And I said something's important going on in Delaware. All right, uh. I told Dad about it. All right, and he says, uh, "Well, that painting, we have the." show at the uh, Bank of Delaware on Market Street, I you and I, 
So that was the first time I ever showed with him. Gotcha. All right. And we How took, did that feel? Huh? Just a, I don't know. I don't. You just it is what it was. Just so what? Okay. Took the painting down. We took it down there and put it up. <laughs> and then Dad said, Let, "Let's go down Wilmington Drive and get a hot dog or something." Oh, and we, when we walked out of there to go down Market Street. I told dad, wait a minute, stand still. And he said, what's the matter? I said, look up there. And he looked up. And there's a big sign on the building that comes out like that, made out of stainless steel and the name going up and down like it's Delaware Trust. And he said, what's that? I said, remember the drawing I did and the plans I made for Delaware Trust sign at Tup Signs, and you said it's gonna fall off the building. We're gonna get sued. I said that's it. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> Dad, that was he was rough on people. Uh huh. All right. Anyway, the. Uh, we went down the Wilmington Drive and came back and there was a little blue dot on the frame of that painting. And uh, I picked it off and the guy that was running the gallery looked at me and said, I put a blue dot on the painting that sold. I said, darn. Well, Somebody bought the painting. They had it in their house for, say, 20 years. And uh, then they gave it to Delaware Hospital, and it hung in there. And then somebody stole it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can I kind of dig in a little bit more in terms of your relationship with your dad? I know um, you said that you had to get a lot of your art uh, education in Philadelphia. Like, how much did your dad teach you? Hardly anything. He was uh -huh. busy teaching other people. Uh huh. I would walk through and look. All right. I remember I went by the studio one day when we had had the studio, and I, I walked in. And he said, he had all these women in there painting scenes, different scenes. And he said, why don't you paint something over there? And I just looked at it and I saw all of his books that he used. He didn't fool with too many books, but he, he'd tear the pages out if he needed huh. of a a book, and, yeah, because uh, he wanted it anyway. And uh, I, I did a painting, started the painting, and, and finished it. And I never saw it anymore. I forgot some, somebody had bought it. Uh huh. All right. But uh, I, I learned by looking at other people's paintings. Okay. And I, I, I was doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. When I discovered, uh, when I graduated high school, I, I bought a, a 50 Chevy. Okay. All right. And I dis I start discovering stuff, man. Uh, you don't have to go far to find a painting to do. All right. I, painted in the marshes, I painted in Philadelphia, I painted everywhere. That was yards. such a statement, I'm sorry. Like, like what you just said there, I hope that everyone kind of caught the, the, the size of that statement that you just casually made, is you don't have to go far. It's all, it's all right here, you yeah. know? Like, I, I yeah. love that. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, the, the thing about teaching painting is I discovered something else. 
that girls will listen more than boys. No right. surprise. <laughs> and, I struggle with that. And if I had a, at Christina Center, there was about eight girls, uh -huh. you know, uh, from different schools. Their parents let them come down there because somebody said, it loafers down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, to get material, it was a, a United Fund thing. And that's what they were paid through. And uh, you had different sponsors for different things. Anyway, they, they wanted me to, when I got there, they had a, a different way of painting. They was using this stuff you mix with water. And I, I said, I'm gonna teach them to paint with oil. I'm gonna teach them to make bronze is from wax. Okay. All right. I'm going to try to teach them to how to carve with carving tools. Well, how, how did you learn all this stuff? By and doing it. I did it. Yeah. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. In, in the 12th grade, I made, I made my own rifle. So are you finding books to learn? Like, I mean, if I wanted to build my own rifle, I, you'd have to go to a book, right? Like, where do you, like, the general concepts, like, how do you... <laughs> yeah. Look, you can, back then, you could buy parts, all right? Okay. Now, I could make the, the wood stock, the whole stock. But that in itself is its own art. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a specialty. <laughs> if I see it, I can make it. Everyone can't do that. <laughs> Most people can't do that. <laughs> you, you, that's what the brain's for. Yeah, yeah. I, I never had to use a computer. All right. Uh, when I was in high school, a computer was a a big massive thing. Yes, I'm aware of that. I haven't right. seen one, but I'm aware. And uh, I learned how to build a house by going by going to Carver. Okay. All right. Uh, that first year, that that first year at a high school, uh, I didn't have a car. All right, and one of my father's, no, it was Eddie Fleming, who was the, the who ran Carver School, he was the principal there. Uh, these people at Monroe Park Apartments called Eddie Fleming. They were looking for somebody who could do woodwork. So, during the summers, I'd work with Eddie Flemings on helping build a house over and stuff like that. So, Dad said, this guy at Monroe Park wants to talk to you. So I walked from Cleveland Avenue all the way my to Monroe mom, Park. Okay, I have to, I have to ask this question because you said Cleveland Avenue. Yeah. My mom grew up on Cleveland Avenue, so I wonder if you know um, Billy Bird, the birds? I'm pretty yeah, sure you're. I so, know. That's my mom and, and my grandma. Billy Bird, that's your my, mom. That's my mom. Yeah. I'll be dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jay Street they, is my dad. Right at the back door. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your, I, your, I, your dad painted my grandma. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I told him about that painting. Yeah. I, I buried him. Just so you can see my whole family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I buried him. <laughs> yeah. 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 Crazy. Yeah, that house was there before we built the studio. It's still there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, and, and Sam Peterson was up there. The Talberts? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I knew every. Yeah. I used to shoot by 22 back there. It's <laughs> 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 crazy. Yeah. Gotcha. But, but, but I walked from, from there to. 
Monroe Park Apartments. And on the okay. way, going through the, past Green Hill Golf Course, uh -huh. some guy told me I can't come through there anymore. Mm -hmm. All right. So I see you come through here, I'm going to lock you up. So I told Dad about it. He and Jimmy White, the caterer, I didn't know they were going to follow me. But the guy stopped me again. And uh, Dad got out of the car, and they told him, you mess with that kid, we're going to do something to you. Mm -hmm. All right. So it was a couple of weeks later, I, I saw a car, and I bought it so I could drive to work. But from Monroe Park Apartments, the, the guy wanted me to help him every Saturday and Sunday, if I could, help build a house in New Jersey, in Collins Lakes. Okay. And I did. All right. And when I finished it, you know, I went over and looked at it. It was a just a one-story house, and it had a lot of aluminum nails in it, so we had to use a gun that shot aluminum nails. It was painted with rubber, and it was going to be a test house. So when I finished that, I started finding places to paint and all back in Chad's Ford back in yes. places I'd never been and uh, that that rifle that I built I'd take it with me and I'd bring in things back like deer and uh -huh. pheasant stuff. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's uh, however you cut it, you are clearly a renaissance man in terms of being able to do so many different things well. And I honestly wonder because uh, you, you come across as a very humble person, but do you recognize, do you I'm, feel I'm that you're a beginning. special person? Well, I get I'm that. just beginning. Yeah. That, but, but do you but, feel like a special person? No. Like, no, I said really? anybody could do it. Okay. Anybody. Okay. Now, two men, okay, but when I, I'd been working a job where you, last one hired, first one, when they close down, you go first. But from my father's studio, a lady who was learning to paint told my father that her husband's looking for somebody to make drawings and then meet me at Six and Green Hill. Okay. All right. Well, the day before I had walked up Van Buren Street, you know, and uh, looking at what's going on up there, and there was a truck that said Tup Signs on it. Okay. All right. And I walked in, and this tall, old man with a glass eye. I said, oh, are you hiring? He says, no, we don't hire colored people mm -hmm. like that. They don't know how to do this. And I walked away. I, I walked halfway down the block and there were some bricks. And the first thing I thought, I ought to go back and throw a brick and it got, mm -hmm. man, I mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, so I started thinking, what my grandmother would say. What would she say? Uh, you know, you, you, you know, she's, you know, you're not supposed to do those kind of things. Okay. But I didn't know about my grandmother before. You know, when she was young. Uh -huh. Anyway. Uh huh. <laughs> so that evening, Dad called and told me about her. He wanted his students wanted somebody who could draw. So that, I went to Six and Green Hill and I went in this big massive building that used to be a car barn where they had trolleys and stuff years ago. And the building's still there. All right, so I walked in and the uh, guy started smiling. You know, he's 
Jewish guy, his name was Sidney Kaiser. He says, you got to be a loafer. I said, yeah, why? He said, come on in here. We went in there. And we went, he had a drawing room and all that. And I'm in the office area. And he says, I need drawings made. And he had a stack of papers that, like that. He said, this here job, that job, this one, that one, that one. See what you could do with that. He said, you know how to use a scale rule? I said, yeah, I learned how to use one of them at Carver School. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, all right. Well, back then, sign business was repairing old signs all over Wilmington of neon. Okay. Every, Market Street was neon. Everything was neon. Concord Pike was just beginning to be Concord Pike. All right. No plexiglass. All right. Okay. All right. Well, one of the jobs, a guy by the name of Louis Sloan came in. He owned the Wilmington camera shop back then. And he came in and he said, uh, Sydney had told him to go in there and, you know, aid of draw what you want. All right. So I had a big table and they said, I want a sign that people are going to see off of Concord Pike if you're going up Concord Pike Hill. So, I remember the World's Fair years ago when I was a little boy. They had a big round globe and a spire. Looked like a big sword. Mm -hmm. All right. So I thought of that. So I made a drawing of a palette that a guy would use his paint sure. on. I made two poles to hold it up in the air and a spire and up the top of that a big red ball. All right, that would light up, all right? Across the face would say charcoal pit. Oh my God, right. are you kidding me? That's yeah. you? Yeah. Get out of here. I did the charcoal pit. Get out of here. Huh? I, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> all right, well, not only- Does anyone know that? Like, I mean, I, like, is it kind of a, is that a universally under, like, is that the thing understood in Delaware? Like the charcoal pit, you, I know that you guys know, but I just have to restate that that's like kind of a Delaware monument. Yeah. Like that's how you know when people come back home, they're like, I want to go to charcoal pit. And the right. first thing right. they think is that sign. The president right. went to charcoal pit. Right. Jamie would go to car charcoal pit. I'm going to pit. Right. Yeah. All right. Not only that. I'm going today. They, they came <laughs> back. All right. And uh, they said, we're going to open up a hot dog place and we're going to put it on Concord Pike mm -hmm. up further. Mm -hmm. What you talking about? And uh, I said, what's the, you got to have a section that tells you what you're selling. You have a section up here. We put a roof on it. The roof's gonna be run up, up and down like that. The faces of the roof, both sides, are gonna be red plexiglass. You know, we cut it out of sheet plexiglass. And inside, since it bends like this, you can put two lines of fluorescent light inside, uh -huh. all right? And the face is gonna be metal. On that metal face, we're gonna make, they're like cans, like the dot on a letter, so the letter is this big, the dot over top of it. Yeah. All right. All that, or maybe that deep, 
right, inside of those sure. fluorescent, I mean, neon. Okay. All right, we got a guy in the back who can make neon. All right. We're going to run a fork through the top of it. All right. And we're going to put a hot dog on top of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Where are we going to get a hot dog made? There's a book that tells you where you can get any shape made out of plexiglass. It's just that they make a form, pump, take warm plexiglass, lay it on it, and pump air. It's like blowing up a tire. Oh. So you have two sections, you put them together. Yeah. You have to trim it, goes down and hold yeah. them together. Yeah. Inside there's lamps. Four lamps mm -hmm. on this side, four on this side. Mm -hmm. You have a rotator down here in this building that you made that's on these poles. Mm -hmm. And on the face of that, you put the dog house. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. The hot dog rotates. Nah. I did the dog house. I got you. That's, I did that's... it there. I did it on DuPont Highway. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and the one in Dover, we called that one Swanky Frank. I don't know that place. <laughs> I don't know that one, but I know the doghouse for sure. All right. All right. Can I ask your son a couple of questions? Yeah. So, um, Jamie, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously we've all learned a whole bunch just about all of the different things that he's done, but. What I noticed from the beginning when he started talking was that when I talked to you last time, the one of you that got lost, mm -hmm. um, you talk about your dad the same way that he talks about his dad. Mm -hmm. It's dad and there's a, just an immediate respect um, and there's still that, um, it, between both generations I see, I don't want to say, it's just like a little bit of awe uh, in terms of the, the, the sort of force of nature that's in front of you. Right. Um, and you've got two generations of that. And I just honestly just simply stated, like, how, how does that um, make you feel? You know what I mean? And how has it guided decisions that you've made in terms of your life? It's really a huge question, but it's, yeah. I can't help but ask it. Yeah, no, it's been, it's, I mean, in a word, just the confidence that I've had throughout my life. Yeah. You know, knowing that you know these these choices and these kinds of things are are doable. Yeah. You know, I mean, we we talked to someone where you know I was like trying to explain like how these opportunities come up. Yeah. After the interview, can you tell me? Still, well, no. Right. They were opportunities that no one was able to meet. So we found someone that a Renaissance man that was able to fill all those gaps and and let that go. You know, so seeing how that always works, seeing how these business owners would treat that, it was nothing but empowering to me right seeing how he could make that from nothing make a, a gun from nothing you know it was right it was limitless as far as you know my confidence and what I would be able to do mm -hmm. you know um, and I, I realized how special that was as I said from a childhood I could tell right away I was like these things that are hanging on the wall are very special and um, you know and that was just one facet you know of what he was doing so yeah you know I mean the confidence to be able to stand on my own two feet you know and, you know, not take stuff off of some people. Yeah. Uh, to know, you know, and take pride in myself and what my family's work does. And, and that's why I'm so, uh, you know, territorial with it now. Yeah. You know, as I realize its importance and how these paintings are, these paintings are linked to me in many ways. Of course. You know, and, and especially the men that made them. So, you know, I'm, I'm very, very proud of my grandfather and my father, as I mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, of their work, how it came to be, yeah. where it is today, where it's headed. So you know, it's it's you know, it, it's always it's always been uh, an amazing journey for me, but always on the up and up. I, I can't. So one of the things that I'm thinking about as I listen to what you just said and what you said, because you said earlier it was like anyone can do it, and I'm always thinking about uh, talent, the idea of talent, and how much that's just hard work versus how much he might really have a special, unique brain that he really doesn't understand. And I can't help but think about that. And then the other thing I'm thinking about is, um, even when you said that to me, like, well, anyone can. It gives me um, 
immediate confidence. Like maybe I could probably do a lot more than I think I can. Sure. Yeah. And you, as a as a as a skater, uh, figure skater, yeah. there's no way that that didn't impact you. Like whatever, I'm just going to work, and that confidence has to be infectious in a good way. It is, it is, you know, and I find in my own life that I do several different things involved in different sports, you know, all kinds of creative outlets, so right. it's something that's, you know, it's, it's in the blood and that's the only way I can understand how mm -hmm. this comes together, even if I can't put it to words or, mm -hmm. or anything like that, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that we have the photographs that yes. lock this Ooh. in, you know, the rifles made. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The you, club, you have the gun that? club at school that you started. You didn't even go there, Dad. We made yeah. a gun, and then we had a gun club. Wow. You know, so just these Literally. incredible things that started from an artistic standpoint. And and that's the thing. It's that and he's walking such. You're you're walking such an incredible line of pure art for the sake of creation, and then you see how it comes into craftsmanship. Sure. So you're creating a sign that's a beautiful sign, but it's also functional. Mm -hmm. And I think the people yeah. don't think about how closely those two things are tied in. You know. Yeah. But you, but you know, what, what was crazy, what, what I like about it, I used to ice skate on a pond, okay. all right? And I came home from, I forget where I was working or something, and there was a note. Jamie was about that tall, all right? There was this note about, we've gone up to the, up to the lake. Bellevue, yeah. Bellevue. Mm -hmm. And when it used to freeze. I decided oh, I'm right. going up to the Bellevue to see what his mom's up to. Alright. Because we they we had a garden up there or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I go up there and park and I'm walking around. I look out there, the pond's frozen. And I see something that looks like Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> <laughs> With the hands behind him, and he is just going. <laughs> Christ, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Uh huh. Now, when I first started, I started skating on the street, and the streets back then, in the middle skates. was you had to almost crawl out there and uh -huh. get up, and you skate, and the skate was going like this. Mm -hmm but he wasn't falling down or anything. Right. And I told somebody, he said, nah, 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 he'll never get nowhere. Same thing. Dad said, yeah. Same should, exact thing. Dad said he should be playing football. And, and I told you before, I didn't, I didn't pick skating. I mean, this is in his yearbook. Those skills are in his yearbook that right. he said he was done, you know? Right. Like gunsmith, ice skating, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. ice skating and it falls in there, you know, but it's, it's all in the design of those things, you know? Yeah. I see. But, uh, did you play any sports as a kid? Did you do anything that was, you know, very athletic? I, I wonder where he gets it from, you know? It's mainly from mom or just genetics just kind of came together and made, you know, I, an I, athlete? I, 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 with, with the little guys, I played football. Okay. All right. Out, out prices run. Yep. Uh, not prices run. Uh, Vanover Avenue sure. and, and uh, where Howard practiced. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I couldn't run fast. Okay. And I, I, I just swore I was going to die before us. <laughs> For real. No, you're serious. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, Dad would be, he'd carry me, he'd, you know, just by the, hold on to my legs and I'm hanging over here and he'd take me to Dr. Brown all the time. Dr. Brown would mix stuff and man, they, and I had to lay out in the backyard during the summer with the sun on me, and hmm. all kinds of stuff. And uh, I remember when the Cruise Pool opened in 1938, okay? But before that, the pool for black kids was a, on the property of the uh, water department at 16th and, and uh, Poplar. There was a, oh, yeah. a little wedge-shaped building like that. And uh, the other part for white kids was in Kirkwood Park. It was the same thing. 
everything was separate. Right. But uh, and, and we didn't have to fight kids, white kids or anything. You know, it's just, they say, you know, hey, how you doing, you know? But uh, I couldn't hardly breathe. You know, I, I just thought I'm, I'm dying, you know, all the time. And uh, I learned to swim underwater, all right? And uh, from Wilson Street to Walnut, I mean, from Wilson Street to Poplar Street was a quarter block long. Okay. And I used to go and get in the deep end and go down in the water and swim underwater from one end to the other, come up. All right. And I kept doing that. And my cousin, we said, well, we're going to be frog men when, when, the, when the war is over and all that. But I told Dr. Brown what I'd been doing. He said, keep on doing it. Right. And it, it cured whatever the problem was. Uh huh. You know, and uh, I, I used to, you know, but uh, I, I did some stuff that, like Jamie said the other day, because uh, this friend of mine, long time, we went down south, all right. And we went to where they they, they filmed. I mean, they they wrote Borgie and Bess. Yes, I've sung that before. And uh, I went down there before King was killed. Mm -hmm. All right. And I went across country. Be with, with not with her, but by myself. Mm -hmm. All right. And I saw what was going on, and I saw that bus that the people went down to the Bay Burn, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they, they laughed at me and said, you went down there? <laughs> and mm -hmm. even a black guy told me, you step across that yellow line, you're going to be on the chain gang tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, darn, I, I, I made it, you know, I made 25. Now wow. can I make 30? All right. And here you are. And, uh, Yes. Yeah. Can but I ask one more question before we get out of here? Um, and I, we started by talking about, you know, the Percy Ricks exhibition. Um, and I guess my last question is, um, like, do you think that we have progressed? Have we? Have we? Have we? you know, taken, have we gone far enough from that situation that you talked about when you went down south and across the country? Do you think that we have really, how, have we progressed and is it enough? No, it, no, mm -hmm. no, no. Okay. No, no. Uh, is, this remind me of, be, before I went down, saw King speaking. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's the same because you, you got some dangerous guys out there, you know. And, so uh, what can we do to move things forward? See, best thing that ever happened since all this started was the camera. Hmm. The camera, taking pictures of what happened. Huh. Because it's going to make people say, well, we can't shoot that son of a gun because we, we go to jail for that. It, and here we are, getting yeah. you on camera. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you're not going to go to jail for anything you said. Oh, but it was, those were some serious gems that you gave us. And I'm yeah. extremely appreciative of the time you just yeah. gave me uh, and us. And so, Thank you. Jamie, is there anything yeah. else you want to say? No, that was it. I mean, the, you know, he's the main feature. Of course, you know, of course. Everything he's saying is gold, so yeah. I'll just sit here and watch. Is there anything else you want to say? You, you I... go in a, a, a place like the, the last place I did the show in Westchester. They had 
cabinets. Okay. See, houses didn't have closets years ago. They had these big arm wars. Europe was loaded with arm wars. And uh, Pennsylvania, Dutch, and people up there, they made these big cabinets, massive cabinets, carving all across the top all kinds of hard woods coming down and a leg that had a come down and it's curved, it's got a little ball and claw at the foot, mm -hmm. all right? That's the skill. Gotcha, I'm following you. That's the skill. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have some kind of skill, you can't survive. You've got to have some kind of skill, all right? I'm going yeah. to stop it there because that is a point that I have been trying to make forever, specifically yeah. with music. Yeah. And I, I, I think that's a perfect way to end it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Skill. <laughs> <laughs>